Okay. Um, what, what is your position on one statin drugs, two alternatives to statin drugs like red yeast, rice, or something else? And three, just what, uh, what else do you want to say about nutritional supplements um, in relation to heart health? So where do you stand on statins? Are there alternatives to statins like red yeast rice? And what other supplements do you want us to be taking uh, to maintain heart health and overall health? Yeah. You go for it, Doc Batiste. All right. So, so I am, I am not, I am not opposed towards medications. So I don't stand against medications. Um, I think the first situation or my stance is first really going back to what Dr. Um, Khan said originally is that I want to know the full profile. I want to understand what your C-reactive protein is. I want to understand what your your LP low A is. I need to understand, is this, are you an individual where I'm treating you after a heart attack, that you've had an actual heart attack that's been documented, or am I treating you before you actually get to the point of a heart attack? That's important. That's primary prevention versus secondary prevention. Uh, and the studies are, are slightly different in terms of the power, the influence, what we call the number needed to treat according to who I'm treating in that particular moment. I next want to know what your values, what your levels are um, of numbers that are there combined with the inflammation that's there. And if you're primary prevention, I'm probably wanting to know if those numbers are intermediate or normal. I need to know what your calcium score is for sure. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, I need to have a sense of what your calcium score is. Once I get to all of that, I'm likely using something where I, I'm using a pharma, pharmaceutical agent like a statin or some derivative of a statin um, that's prescribed. Now, I have had patients who have found success with red rice yeast, um, but however, the dosing, I haven't yet personally, I haven't found one that is sustained and replicable that I'm able to co confidently prescribe. In terms of CoQ10, which is another supplement that perhaps I use to kind of offset some of the side effects or, or things that I've, I've used. There's a lot of, there are some other agents that I've used, we've gone away from from niacin. Um, there are some others, berberine and some others that I haven't used as much, but I toyed around with in certain popul certain patients based upon where they're at. But my start starting point after nutrition, that's the obvious, is I then will go towards a stat. Now I've had patients who I've achieved the goal and then I've followed up. What's their LP low A? What's their C-reactive protein? but making sure they don't have familial hypercholesterolemia. All these things are extremely important and they really dictate the tool that I use, but I leave open to myself all tools in the, in the tool chest. Yeah, and you know, again, we're gonna agree on a lot. There was a uh, society in 2007 that formed called SHAPE, the Society of Heart Attack Prevention and Eradication. And it was a very academic group. I think they still have an active website. You do not hear as much about them. But they proposed that we're treating some people with lifelong prescription statin medication who don't have atherosclerosis and may never develop atherosclerosis. And they proposed, it was just a, a theory, that if you got a carotid ultrasound and a calcium score, you might choose not to use prescription drugs in people that have no atherosclerosis and teach them about diet and exercise maybe supplements, and follow them, just like a clean colonoscopy might be followed up with another one in five to 10 years. And um, the downside to that is, you know, there may be some disease developing during the period you're not treating them, and they may come back in five years, and now their calcium score went from zero to 68, and maybe earlier treatment might have prevented it. Uh, we have no perfect way of knowing that. I saw that in 2007, it struck me, and that's sort of the practice plan. But I literally struggle with patients. I struggle with myself with patients on this question. I had a 39-year-old, my last patient today, uh, referred to me from Northern Michigan, it was a Zoom call, <clears throat> and his cholesterol is 265, and he was referred by a good nutritionist, uh, which isn't very common. And it turned out he was highly educated and I had to go through everything. I mean, he was doing the bulletproof coffee thing for a while, but to his credit, he stopped that about a year ago. So his current cholesterol numbers were not, you know, butter in his coffee and MCT oil in his coffee, but his nutritionist put him on a high protein diet, which basically translated to a whole lot of grass fed beef. I mean, he had, uh, what do you have, uh, pea soup last night. I thought I was excited until he told me I had to have ground sausage in it. And, 
He has a very high saturated fat diet. And we agreed, let's take four to six weeks. I actually sent him a diet plan to eat whole food plant-based. And he was open to it. And let's find out if you're one of these wonderful people that your cholesterol drops 80 points in six weeks on a plant-based diet, high in fiber, low in saturated fat. Not everybody's open to it. He was open to it. He goes, I, I want to be healthy while we get a calcium score. But a calcium score at age 39 is a mixed bag. It's very inexpensive and it's available. But at that age, there may be more soft plaque, which is invisible than hard plaque. And there's a more advanced CT scan I love, but you know it's expensive and it's not for everybody. So you will struggle with it and we'll circle back. I am schooled in supplements. Um, I also agree, uh, you know, there were five people that died recently in China from red yeast rice that was contaminated. People go to Consumer Reports and read about red yeast rice. On the other hand, you go to PubMed, the National Library of Medicine, there's a lot of data that's in the peer-reviewed literature. There's studies that are up to 5,000 people randomized to red yeast rice or placebo that show that it lowers cholesterol and has a clinical outcome. So uh, I think for many people, it's an option. I use statins. I live in a town, Detroit, where one of the more prominent integrative doctors wrote a book called Statin Disaster. Many of my patients have read that and I've got to kind of redirect them at, you know, this is not a disaster. These are very highly studied books, uh, uh, drugs rather, um, after reading that book. But my own little spin on it is if I can, I keep the statin dose low, which is not necessarily conventional. Doctors like medium and high dose. In fact, it's called HIS, high intensity statin is the abbreviation you'll see in journals. And I add in a second drug called ezetimibe. And it lets me hit these super low LDL levels that cardiologists are gaga about, and I believe in, for people with advanced disease. But I don't have to use 80 milligrams of a statin because statins do have myalgia problems. Statins do raise blood sugar. Statins do raise lipoprotein A. And uh, there's a wonderful research study from Korea called the Racing Study, where this low-dose statin plus ezetimibe, Zetia, uh, was proven to be actually better at reversing plaque than a medium dose statin alone. So I kind of reach for that as my preferred choice.